FTS is armed, Falcon 9 is in startup, and now controlling. Dragon is in countdown. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX Endeavor, we acknowledge, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Stop. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Got speed, Axiom 1. Together, a new chapter begins. Godspeed, AX-1. T plus 38 seconds into this historic mission, flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Orange, telemetry nominal. Stage one, throttle down. Throttling down in the preparation for max dynamic pressure. Next you. Stage one, throttle up. Merlin 1D engines coming Stage back up to power. One Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. The crew calling out one Bravo should a escape situation arise. It tells the Dragon flight computer what profile to fly using the Super Draco engines. But everything is looking good on Falcon 9. We're getting nominal call outs from all the engineers and a great view from the ground camera and the onboard cameras. Is that chill? Beginning to chill in the second stage turbo pump in preparation for its ignition coming up in just over half a minute from now. Coming up on about three and a half G's acceleration for the crew. We'll begin throttling down the Merlin engines to hold that, period, that level of acceleration. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. It's what we like to hear. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. An AOS Bermuda, acquisition of signal. The Bermuda tracking station now getting telemetry from the second stage of the Falcon 9 with the Dragon on top. T plus 4 minutes, 10 seconds. Everything continues to be nominal. First stage coasting to Apogee, and then it will come back down for landing on the drone ship. Second stage partway through its lengthy burn to get the crew into orbit. So, Kate, four and a half minutes in, everything continues to look good. What a absolutely picture-perfect liftoff. We've got a live view of the crew inside Dragon Endeavor. Looks like uh, everyone is still pretty comfy. Uh, as John had said earlier, we got Dragon to... Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. All right, good call out there that trajectory is nominal. Uh, yeah, like never we got as John mentioned, we got to about three and a half G's there. Position signal, New Hampshire. Landing in water is some gorgeous shot of those four main parachutes. 1,000 meters. Copy, 1,000 meters. So just the crew reporting that they're only 1,000 meters right. uh, from splashdown. Right. Really a beautiful shot of that toasted marshmallow. Um, you know, that, that thermal protection, those thermal protection systems, right. um, you know, keep the crew safe. Copy, 400. Like you said, you know, that's that's a testament to the design of the vehicle doing exactly what it was designed to do and what it Absolutely. has to do to do it safely. And like you said, 
rinse, reuse, right? It's all part of reusable space flight. First live view of our crew there from inside the Dragon capsule now that they have re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. As you can tell by the cheers behind us, we can confirm that the Dragon capsule with the AX-1 crew has, has splashed down. Dragon Endeavor has returned home with the Axiom-1 crew. Dragon SpaceX, we see splashdown and mains cut. Okay, so right now it looks like we can see that the recovery teams are preparing to lower the vessel's hydraulic lift mechanism into the water, uh, which will bring the spacecraft on into the on-deck translation system known as the nest. So Dragon will remain in the nest during the crew extraction and for the journey back into port. And the capsule is currently being lifted and set on the nest. Then once it's centered and oriented, uh, Dragon will then be translated into the hangar underneath the helipad aboard the ship so that we can open the hatch. Once open, a SpaceX medical doctor will be the first one in to check on MLA Larry, Aton, and Mark and see if they're ready to egress out of the vehicle. All waving, all in good spirits. I see a bunch of thumbs up. Welcome home, AX1. Lots of smiles on board. It's always good to see. Larry making his egress from the Dragon Endeavor. You can hear the cheers in the background for it. All right, those are his first steps back on planet Earth after spending 17 days on orbit. If it were me, I imagine I'd, I'd probably feel a little shaky, right? Because yeah. they're, they're, they don't have gravity up there. I've, you know, they did take exercise mm -hmm. equipment exactly. to, to keep their muscles working while they're up there, but still, hey, it's... Sarah, we're going off comm. Thanks for everything you see on deck. Sounds good. Talk to you later. <laughs> My last call there from MLA to say that they're no longer going to be utilizing the Dragon communication systems. I'll just talk with everybody on the deck. <laughs> So there we saw mission specialist Mark Pathy. He was seated on the far left, or at the left window seat. All right, removing the footrests on the other two seats. Like you said, I, I have a feeling Aton will be next. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it looks, looks like, like it's MLA. MLA. Yeah, it's certainly part of the reacclimation process is remembering those muscles that help keep you stabilized <laughs> in, in a 1G environment. You know, it's, you haven't used them in a few days, so um, it's certainly time spent after coming back home. Um, oh, just kidding. All right, so MLA oh, did a little uh, change of seats there, so Aton will be the next one to come out. It's very, you know, that, that, that feels very on par for him. You know, we've heard that MLA really... Uh, was an exemplary commander for this crew, and you know he basically just said, "No, Aton goes first, I'll be last." Yeah. And one of my favorite phrases is, "Leaders eat last." You know, make sure everybody else goes first, yeah. and you know it's just great to see that. Yeah. There we see Aton making his egress and first dance back on ground in 17 days. Yeah, it's quite the readjustment coming back down to earth and going from you know regardless of how long you're up there yeah. obviously it's um, you know the longer you are the the more difficult the transition yeah. can be yeah. uh, but you know even after the 17 days that they were in microgravity you know that's a that's still a pretty significant change on the body yeah it certainly is so it's pretty amazing to see them you know just 
take those steps yeah. and, and begin that reacclimation process. Perfect. Now, once they are, uh, so for the three crew members that we saw exit or egress the vehicle already, um, you know, they they walk off and they are immediately escorted into one of the medical bays that's on board. So the recovery vessels are fully equipped with uh, medical bays to assist with, you know, any ailments or uh, illness that the crew might be feeling at that time. It seems like everybody was in really good spirits yeah. and everybody was feeling quite well. Um, but, you know, the, that capability is on board the Dragon capsule. And so basically the crews just go in and get checked out yeah. by the flight surgeon and right. um, get those thumbs up. Yeah, just that capability to have that immediate assessment is really important. Um, even if you are feeling perfectly fine and taking your great steps, you know, it's all part of the ground-based operations that ensure that you come home safely and you get out of the capsule safely. So there we saw MLA slide down the ramp and now standing. Welcome home, Commander MLA. With that, all four crew members of AX-1 are now safely out of the Crew Dragon Endeavor. With that wonderful coverage so we could all share in this, the AX-1 mission is one of the more visible milestones of our journey to ensure that space travel is opened up to more and more of the brightest minds and eager explorers from around the world who want to make our home planet a better place. And we believe this mission, represented by the US, Canada, Spain and Israel, advances that vision of a unified humanity reaching for the stars. Despite the strife going on on the ground, the ISS crew and our astronauts continued working together as a beacon of international cooperation. In the years preceding this mission, we at Axiom Space set out to develop the procedures, foster the agreements, and build the operations and support teams needed to expand what has historically been negotiated only between governments. And with every step, we've created new precedents. We set the bar very high for ourselves, and we asked a lot of this crew. And here we are at the conclusion of an incredible mission, and I must say the teams exceeded every expectation. We could not be more proud of what has just been accomplished by Commander Michael Lopez Alegria, Larry Connor, Eitan Stiebe, and Mark Pathy, as well as the hundreds of team members who have played a part in the success of AX-1. Over the course of this mission, we've succeeded in inspiring those who seek to pursue a place among the stars. Over 400 interns applied for the 23 openings at Axiom. Five additional countries made the decision to fly their astronauts with us, and every day we're approached by new innovators wanting to take advantage of microgravity. To the teams at NASA and SpaceX, to each crew member's own teams in Ohio, Canada, Spain, and Israel, to the teams at the Ramon Foundation and Rokia Mission, and to the principal investigators around the world who have trusted us with facilitating your studies, and to the Axiom family who have worked tirelessly these last few weeks and months. Thank you. On behalf of Axiom Space, to the crew of AX-1, Mark, Eitan, Larry, Mike, well done, and welcome home.